a minute, turn their backs on something Ukraine needs in its hour of need. That is the danger of the rise of the right-wing influence that is feeling its impact in Canada. You can call me right-wing or you can call me left-wing, just don't call me Shirley. Ask me how I feel as a Canadian, though, and I'd say this bird's been overcooked! It's gonna sound mighty altruistic, but I used to believe in a Canada. I used to believe that we were smarter than Americans, and we were better than them, too! Not because they were worse than us, but because we were better than them. I used to believe that we were once a peacekeeping nation. I used to believe that the government was on our side, very briefly. I used to believe that we all said sorry, and that we were all neighbors. And I used to believe in a man named Justin Trudeau. I saw in him a reflection of myself, a good-looking white guy who was also Canadian. And I thought to myself, you go, guy. But now I think you go, guy! Because it's just scandal after secret after sidestep after some new bullshit. And if you've ever seen the guy answer a yes or no question with a yes or no answer, please send me the video. Granted, the government does provide good services, and for that, I am grateful. But they also do some shady ass shit. So of course, I'm gonna be a little upset when the money I make for them skips not only myself, but my neighbors and my neighbor's neighbor, and ends up in the pocket of some leader halfway across the world with an intent to kill! And at the exact same time, the middle and lower classes struggle for air, treading water and barely keeping afloat from paycheck to paycheck, and the houses of the supposed commons are having sleepovers with their buddies in king-sized waterbeds that we bought for them, and I'm sick of it! Time's up on accountability, Trudeau! You gotta turn around sometimes! Your citizens are not okay! Give your head a shake, man! When my father died, I was a 39-year-old drug addict working at a car dealership moving tires for less than minimum wage. I was so broke that I had to cold turkey my antidepressants, uh, enduring constant seizures for months while I dried out and sold my valuables for cat food for my cats. Last year, I lived in a garage and so far I've moved three times this year. I'm missing four teeth and I'm stuck seemingly in a self-perpetuating debt spiral. My friend just told me that he sits in his car in his free time and drinks until his next shift starts because he doesn't know what else to do. And every single person that I know is or has been an alcoholic or a drug addict because Canadians' faith in the future disappeared a long time ago. And like my friend and many other Canadians, I don't know what to do either. So this is what I'm doing. Because when I was at rock bottom, my friend asked me, what if you die? But thankfully, the question that I had to ask myself was, what if you don't die? 